Welcome back to the three months of Moto Logics with Carnades.org. This is going to continue to be a sequel to the 100 Days of Logic or Logic 201. Today we're going to be continuing with Temporal Logic, looking at the question of is precedence reflexive? We're talking about precedence, the precedence relation we've been talking about for a couple videos now. And we're going to be asking the question, does this relation have the property of reflexivity? So... In the next several videos, we're going to be talking about the various properties of the precedence relation. If you've not watched my video on the properties of relations, it's highly recommended that you do to better understand these concepts, because we're not going to be reviewing the exact definitions of reflexivity, transitivity, symmetry, anti-symmetry, and all these other different properties. Check out that video. It's a good video, if I do say so myself. So... If a certain relation is reflexive, that means that it applies to itself. Some philosophers construe precedence as reflexive. Some aver that it's irreflexive. It doesn't really matter which you do, so long as you stay consistent. We're going to take it as an irreflexive relation, unless noted otherwise. But basically, because all we're doing is we're just kind of defining the tools we're going to use to model time, it doesn't really matter too much how you define precedence as long as you stay consistent with it. So, if precedence is reflexive, that means that no moment is before itself. No instant bears the precedence relation to itself, or for all x, it's not the case that x precedes x. IRPT in proofs. This seems intuitive, but we can also take another meaning of precedence and claim that all instants bear the precedence relation to themselves, and that's going to be what will happen if we say that precedence is in fact reflexive. So someone who asserts that precedence is reflexive is going to claim that every instant bears the precedence relation to itself, or for all x, x in fact is before x, or x does precede x. We're going to represent that as R-E-P-T in proofs. Generally, to kind of maintain a basic understanding of precedence and to make precedence really feel like a precedence relation, if someone construes precedence as reflexive, they're also going to assert that it's anti-symmetrical. Basically, if two instances are both before the other, they are in fact the same instant. Or, if for all x and all y, x is before y and y is before x, that implies that x is equal to y, or x and y are the same instant. ASPT in proofs. Basically, reflexivity is saying that for any instant, we're going to count that instant as before itself. All of the instants that come after that instant succeed it, they don't precede it, and all of the instants that come before that instant precede it, but that instant itself, where does it stand? If you think precedence is reflexive, you're saying that instant counts as one of the instants that precedes itself. If you think it's irreflexive, you're saying it does not. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Like I said, it doesn't matter that much which one you choose, but you want to stick with one. We're going to stick with irreflexivity, unless otherwise stated. Up next, we're going to be talking about another property of relations called the transitivity of time and the transitivity of the precedence relation. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org and watch a new video every single day for 100 days here with the three months of modal logics. Stay skeptical, everybody.